Text-to-speech is the future, particularly for those who really, truly cannot be bothered to go down and get their microphones to record these pre-podcast messages. If I, the creator of this show, cannot be bothered to do the minimal amount of effort to get this done professionally. I truly have no idea why I would expect others to do the effort of subscribing to my Patreon, and yet here we are. Subscribe at patreon.com slash matthewdonald for bonus content every month where we talk about pop culture featuring prehistoric animals. This month we will have two bonus episodes, that's right, two. One about the Valley of Guanji, a classic stop-motion extravaganza featuring dinosaurs and cowboys, and the video game Ratchet and Clank. Tools of Destruction, which has a level with alien dinosaurs in it, which is pretty neat I reckon. The reason there's two this month is not because I was feeling generous, but because I couldn't release last month's in time. I'm truly a professional. Link is in the description for where you can sign up. Why do I do this? Roar. Growl. Snarl. Bellow. Welcome to Paleo Bites, the podcast that, like the fart of an apatosaurus, stinks and blows. Oh, jeez. <laughs> that was very unexpected. Uh, I don't know why. It's perfectly on brand for this show. It is. It is. Yeah. <laughs> uh, my name is Matthew Dahl, and each week I and a rotating series of guest co-hosts talk about and rate a genius and prehistoric animal, be it dinosaur, mammal, arthropod, and so on. This week, I'm joined by someone who clearly does not know the humor of the show, despite being here from literally episode one. Uh- it's CC Eilert. How are you? Hi, I'm good. How about you? I am pretty good. So I I had a thought when I was listening to an episode that we had done before. Just one. Uh, some, look, sometimes those are rare. <laughs> own, so who knows? Uh, ch- cherish the, when I have them, you know. But I had a thought when listening to an episode I did. We talked about like if there was any uh, dinosaur that you would want to withstand the burp of. You think you could withstand the burp of? And I made I. And we were talking about like how we didn't want to be a meat eater because of the mm. uh, stuff. But then I thought came up with an interesting observation, <laughs> an, an interesting scientific inquiry, I guess, about the whole thing. I would rather the burps of a carnivore are worse, but in terms of a herbivore, it's the farts. Oh, really? I think. Oh, yeah. yeah. Bunnies can't even. I don't think bunnies fart. But I'm just thinking, like, like think about all the the fiber they're eating, you know, and and. Or like the plants and other stuff, and I'll also like think of like what spinach does to you, or like. Oh, I totally disagree. I think that carnivores have much worse poop, like oh. a dog or a cat. Their oh, poop really? Is way stinkier. Like oh a, no! I, like, I, like a bunny's poop is like nothing. What about like the 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 long neck dinosaurs that do- gobble up rocks and they help digest in the gut? You know, just. But would that make it stinky? According to Walking with Dinosaurs, yes, they oh. produce a lot of gas that way. Oh, that's my theory. It seems like you disagree. We'll have a we'll have a scientific discussion on it at some point and come to a conclusion. There you go. Okay. Well, we'll have to Which, get some sa- some specimens. My my <laughs> hypothesis is that carnivore burps are worse, but herbivore farts are worse. Mm, so okay. I think herbivore burps are fine, and carnivore farts are fine. Well, not fine. They're still bad. Both are still bad. <laughs> I should say. <laughs> but, You're like. Mm. <laughs> Oh no! I saw this. Oh, was it Nigel Marvin? One of those, uh, you know, those not biology people with, like eating the poop. Like, mm, there's fruit. It's sweet. And I'm like, oh, no, it's not. It's poop. Stop lying. It's like when they see, like, they get those weird centipedes, like going like this, like, oh, it's oh. absolutely gorgeous. Oh, I'm like, no, centipedes. it's not. Oh. Get it? You love nature and animals, but shut up. <laughs> I do too, but no, some things can be ugly and gross. It's got I mean, too many legs. Too many squirming just... legs. Yeah. Plus, centipedes are carnivores, too. Centipedes are so much worse than millipedes. That's what Jake's always like, oh, let the centipedes stay. They'll eat all the other bugs in our house. And I'm like... (laughs) I hate it when people say that. When people are like, let's keep this big, gross, nasty bug in here because it eats all the little bugs. I'm like, so what you're saying is I should replace the little bugs with this big, gross bug. I'd rather have no bugs, thank you. Also, this is how people in the past have gotten into a lot of trouble. Yes. <laughs> They're like, oh, use this to eradicate this, and now the latter thing is the problem. Yes, and now we have an excess <laughs> of giant gross bugs. Did we not learn our lesson? No. Yeah, never. We never. And then learned. they just keep eating each other until there's one even bigger one. Oh, no, the boss one. <laughs> I, had a, I had a terrible thought the other day oh, when, I was God. Like, when there was a spider in my apartment, and I left to get the fly swatter, and, and the spider was kind of close to ish not not that close but on the same vicinity of the area of my cockatiel lyra's cage oh no and i was like oh no what if by the time i get back 
I come back and Lyra's gone and then there's just a really big spider. Oh jeez. Oh no. <laughs> That's nightmare fuel. Yeah. Oh, Don't God. do that to yourself. Uh, anyways. Yeah. Let's talk about something else, shall we? <laughs> Let's talk about Rabdodon. What a smooth transition. I love it. Yeah. Rabdodon. Rabdodon. It it means fluted tooth. You know what that means? Because I don't. I have no idea. Does it like have little holes in it? Where you blow? <laughs> Sounds like just cavities. Yeah. <laughs> uh, type. Uh, it's a Rhabdodon Earthopod, kind of like you know the Transylvania horse before, but this one's the namesake. Mm. Size is twenty feet slash six meters long, so quite a bit bigger than yeah. Transylvania horse. Six hundred and sixty pounds or three hundred kilograms. Yeah, it's a big mama. Yep. Diet herbivore. It is from the late Cretaceous, 70 to 66 million years ago, just like Transylvanosaurus, so deja vu for mm. both. It was in France, Spain, and potentially a few other places in Europe. Mm. It was described in 1869. Pop culture appearances. Apparently, it's in Land Before Time 5. I don't know how someone would look at this uh, generic dinosaur and be like, oh, it's a raptodon. Uh, but um, yeah. I don't know. the documentary Dinosaur Planet. And the always dependable preschool series Dinosaur Train. God Aww. bless you, pre-K CGI. So keep featuring those obscure critters. Yay. Okay. So last time we talked about di- island uh, insular dwarfism. Mm-hmm. Let's talk about insular gigantism. Which just does not seem like it makes sense. It be- me. So r- while insular dwarfism or island dwarfism is when an animal that's bigger or, or random, uh, sort of a bigger-ish size, goes to an island, there's lesser resources. And so it gets smaller over time to, as it evolves to deal with the lesser resources. Island gigantism is when a creature that is either the, the same size or slightly smaller goes to an island, realizes there's no competition, mm. and then gets bigger. This usually happens on bigger islands, though. Yeah. And that's what happened with Rabdodon. Oh. Now, Rabdodon on its own is it's not as big as like the big iguanodons of the day, but it's big for its family. It's by far the biggest of its family. Wow. Of the Rabdodon. Quit picking on it. Yeah, I know. <laughs> the biggest I... of its family. We don't fat shame here. Well, actually, it might not even be the biggest of its family. So, like, Mutaburosaurus is a Rabdodon. I think it was bigger. Uh, that was from Australia. It's just big boned. It is just big boned. But now I'm going to make fun of it for not being the biggest of its family. Like, ha! <laughs> you can do better. <laughs> Come on. Keep eating! <laughs> it's like that scene in Matilda with the kid to force the kid to oh, eat the cake. Oh, God. That's like childhood trauma for oh, sure absolutely. right there. Uh, it wasn't as bad for me as the closet full of nails. Yeah. That's the part that scared me the most. I think the food freaked me out more, for sure. But Do you know that movie was directed by Danny DeVito? Was it really? Yeah. Interesting. <laughs> okay. So, yeah. An easy detail to. It's like, one of those overlook. movies that I loved as a kid. I loved it so much. Like, oh, what a whimsical, light children's movie. And then I got older. I was like, why did I watch this? Oh, it's pretty, like, messed up for sure. It's like, what is wrong with people? I know sometimes people think that modern day movies are a bit too sanitized, but I say, you know what? Good. Uh, yeah, that's <laughs> I mean, the debate, right? Yeah, like, kids don't need that. <laughs> I mean, sometimes kids should be a little scared, I guess, in a healthy way. Yeah. But, but I don't know. Anyways, you got a lot to say on this one. So. Oh, gosh, yeah. I've got, like, an entire uh, Mainly about the Discoverer, I guess. Cause, yeah. Like, so, there, for, really, there wasn't a ton um, to say about it. It was one of the Keystone Prey species in Europe, which, as I have to do in every episode, it bring it around to a bunny. Of course it did. I uh, mean, look. I mean, it's way bigger than even your famous Neurolagus rex. Yes. But... Pretty big for, like, a prey animal. Oh, like, yeah. Well, geez. it's bigger than a cow, you know, but, like, um, um, but it's, yeah, it's pretty big, and it has to deal with, like, a lot of predators, like Variraptor and, um, and Pyroraptor and Tarascosaurus and mm. other creatures that I'm sure you've heard of and are well aware of. Yeah. I'm an expert on all of those. Yeah. It's... Yep. Allo, uh, there's sort of crocodiles like Allodomposuchus. Mm. Yeah, uh, that was fun because that, that one was mentioned in um, Dinosaur Planet, and uh, that was the narrated by Christian Slater. Oh, that's cool. <laughs> and he's like, the way he says, Alodopasuchus is very cool. <laughs> so they do call this one Iguanodon in that, well, then Raptodon, but it's pretty much a Raptodon because Iguanodon was not this late in the Cretaceous period. How dare they? I know, how dare they indeed. <laughs> Well, speaking of pronunciations, I had to look up the pronunciation of the island it lives on. Oh, yes. Hotseg? Hotseg, yes. H-A-T-E-G. It's an island that is not an island anymore. (laughs) It's just a mountain now. Oh, wow. I think, or a series of mountains, anyways. Well, I guess it was about the same size as Ireland, 
Uh, same size island as Ireland. It's the same size as Ireland. <laughs> well, the same. I was was it the same Ireland. size island as Iceland or Ireland or just Ireland or I. I think just Ireland. Ah, uh, but isn't Ireland not an island? Isn't it sep- connected to Scotland? Wait, no. The UK listeners have all left now at this point. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> it exists. God save the Queen. <laughs> right. Well, no, it's God save the King now. Uh not for long though. Look at well, he doesn't have long. <laughs> yeah. Okay, United Kingdom. Hold on. This is not related. It, keep going on what you're Anyway, so say. the island was the same size as Ireland. Existed okay. seventy billion years ago. Oh, that's right. Northern Ireland is part of the United Kingdom. Then South Island is its own thing. Sorry. Continue. That's okay. <laughs> uh, it consisted of river systems and dry floodplains. The climate was subtropic with a wet and dry season. Yep. Um. Pterosaurs were the top predator- predators on the island, which yes, yes, said, uh, like the Hatsuk Doctrix, which we'll get to. Um, with sauropods, who were island dwarfs, and theropods, uh, I don't know how to pronounce that. Like the Balu? What Balu? did you find here? I've never heard of this. <laughs> you did some research, man. <laughs> as well as the uh, Ornithischians? Ornithischians, yes. How do you pronounce that? Ornithischians are the bird, are the bird-hipped dinosaurs. Okay. Uh, or, uh, so, like, all dinosaurs that... It's very confusing, because there's bird-hipped and lizard-hipped, which are Sauritians. Uh Guess which one birds evolved from? Definitely not the bird one. No, that'd be too easy. <laughs> it's the lizard-hipped ones. Because, Sauritians. of course. And that, you know, that also means that, technically, birds, modern-day birds, since they're still classified as dinosaurs, are therefore still classified as Sauritians, which means birds are lizard-hipped dinosaurs. What? Ah! I love it, actually. No, I hate it. <laughs> I'm glad you like it. You're embracing the chaos. Yeah. Yeah, sometimes I can be a creator of chaos, so. Yeah, it makes sense. It. I'm not going to lie, though. Like, I really went off on Yeah, you guy. discovered, it was discovered some barren that you have a hole. Yeah, this this was like a whole black hole that I just went into. Let's hear it. Um, <laughs> It was discovered by Baron Franz Napschka. Um, von Felso, and I cannot pronounce his last S- name. It's Shiraz. S- F- uh, Franz von Fuchu Shiraz. Yes. A uh, Hungarian aristocrat who was credited as one of the pioneering scientists of paleobiology. I thought you could say the pioneering scientist of paleobites at first. Pa- I could have. <laughs> um, and who has uh, first described the theory of insular dwarfism. Which we, we have talked about. about. Yeah. Yes. Wow. Um, he was born in 1877 in what is now Transylvania, Romania. A good year, 1877. Um, that was right? the year that marks the 100-year anniversary, but the other direction of when Star Wars came out. I was going to say, did they make a good vintage of wine in 1877? Oh, they probably did. Yeah. <laughs> probably still drink it now. That costs like $1,000 just to pour it. Well, yeah, probably. Cheval Blanc. <laughs> so at the time, that was part of Hungary and was part of... Actually, France was part of the Hungary- Hungarian. Oh, Parliament. there's nothing I love more <laughs> than late 19th century and early 20th century European politics. It right. was a mess. <laughs> <laughs> like, I mean, this guy just got all over the place. But uh, it looks like his sister, Ilona, discovered dinosaur bones on their estate in 1895. Nice. Uh, France showed these to his professor, Edward Seuss, who encouraged him to study them. Okay. Um, this guy, he lived a very interesting life, Mr. though. Mr. Fra- Baron Franz. Yes, Franz Napska. Uh, he once was held hostage while in, on an expedition. What? Uh, it's like, the- you give us your dinosaur <laughs> bones, or we'll take your wife. <laughs> I guess he didn't want the bones. He wanted uh, 10,000 Turkish pounds for his release. I mean, look, that's probably more valuable, as much as I love dinosaurs. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and then, while on a mission for the Austro-Hungarian government, uh, he yeah, the was... Austro- the Ola Austro- Austro-Hungarian Empire collapsed in World War One with the Central Powers. So I guess Franz was the first documented plane hijacker. Like, what? Yeah, during the First <laughs> World War. Uh, it resulted in him being stripped of his entire estate and all his possessions. Including which... all of his fossils. Uh, oh, not the fossils. Not the fossils. <laughs> not the rhabdodons. I guess to try to cover for his debts, he sold his entire fossil collection to the National History Museum of London, which is impressive. They didn't actually steal something. They actually bought something. Wow, that is yeah. impressive. Well, that's from a fellow European country. So yeah, true. It's not colonial, so. I guess after that, he began to struggle with illness. And in the end, he first shot his partner. A man named... Oh, wow. I said his wife earlier, but no, uh, he, he was... Bayazid 
Almas Dota. Okay. Um, yes, said, um, trans was LGBTQ+. Nice. I said his wife and I was misinformed. That was me falling victim to heteronormative standards. I apologize. But you learn and you do I better. I did learn, yes. Um, after he slipped sleep, sleeping powder into Dota's tea, um, saying in his suicide note that he didn't want to leave him penny, penniless and sick, which is why he poisoned him. Okay, look, if you're gonna if you're gonna kill yourself, don't bring other people down. Yeah, kind of. A, mm. Um, I don't like this Franz guy anymore. (laughs) (laughs) He lived a life, Matt. He lived a life. Uh, He wrote a suicide note explaining his nervous breakdown and reasoning for his decision and turned the gun on himself. Oh, God. Um, Wait, so he shot... He poisoned his his partner, partner, but shot himself. I, from what I understand, being poisoned, depending on what you're being poisoned with, can be a very miserable way to die. Yeah, do it the other way around. Okay, look, I'm not advocating <laughs> Do for, not kill your partner. for killing your partner yourself. But if you must kill your partner and yourself, give your partner the quicker death. Yeah. Because they're not the ones asking for this. Yeah, that's true. I mean, maybe he just went to sleep. Maybe Dodo just went to sleep. Yeah, like... <laughs> yeah. It's your choice, so you have to deal with the pain. Also, like, maybe don't murder people at all. Yeah, that's probably <laughs> that's probably good, too. Hot take here for Paleo Bites, but don't murder people. Uh, We're help. not a pro-murder podcast. No, although I'm a huge true crime fan, they do not create more true crime. <laughs> <laughs> but, but do, in a way, so I can listen to more content for my podcast. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, you can just do a fresh take on an old story. You know? That is true. Well, there's only so many ways you can talk about Jack the Ripper. Or... Yeah, that's true. All right, anyways, sorry, continue. <laughs> oh, no, you're good. During his life, he fell in love with all things Albanian, mm. uh, going so far as to write in his diary that he would one day be the king of the country. Look, you know, sometimes goals <laughs> are, having goals is a good thing, as, it, but as long as they're attainable. But he's just all over the place, and I kind of love it. Like, uh, I'm here for it. Uh, <laughs> if I was, said I want to be the king of Italy now, as would you believe me? I could do it. No. No, I couldn't. Why? No. I would think you're a weirdo. Well, thank you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you don't think that already? That's already really... I not... would think you're even more of a weirdo. Cool, 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 cool. <laughs> okay. um, pretty cool. He was the first to put, like, flesh onto bones, so to speak, of dinosaurs. Ooh. The whole, uh, what was it, uh, skin wrapping thing, like, what was mm. it called? What was it called? What is it called? Why? Something wrapping. Shrink wrapping. Mm-mm. The whole shrink wrapping thing we can blame on him. I don't know. I mean, at least he was putting some flesh on. Yeah. We don't know exactly how much. Yeah, it could have been a lot of flesh. could have been a big, beefy boy. Yeah. I guess while other people were still, like, assembling bones, he was examining physiology and conceptualizing behavior, which Mm. was just light years ahead of um, other people. He was known as the father of paleobiology, which we Ooh. mentioned at the beginning. Once again, I thought you were going to say the father of paleobites. Paleobites, the father of paleobites. That's me, damn it. <laughs> He's not going to take the title of king of Albania and creator of this podcast. Matt Donald, the all-father of paleobites. Yes, that's me, the Odin of paleobites. <laughs> All right, continue. Um, He theorized that birds developed from ground-dwelling dinosaurs. <gasps> yeah. That's pretty cool. Uh, he also concluded that many of the reptiles during the Mesozoic era, era were warm-blooded, uh, which is now a wildly, widely held modern scientific yes. belief. Yes, uh, most of the one and, the, and some of the bigger ones might have been like mesothermic, like halfway, mm. because they would be, otherwise they would have overheated just from their sheer size. Oh wow! Huh? Like one of, one of the things, like because like the new Jurassic World movie Dominion, uh, it. Um, Showed a lot of dinosaurs in snow, and some of them didn't have feathers, like the Parasaurolophus and stuff. And some people were like, "How are they staying warm? Like how, are, without insulation? Like it's it's really called gigantothermy, where you get warm just by being big." I do not. Ha- I have the opposite problem. Yeah, you get too cold yeah, you have, from being small. An- you have microthermy, <laughs> yes. or micro antithermy. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> micro. What's the opposite? What's thermy but cold? Except I know cold is just the opposite of heat. So, micro athermy. There you go. <laughs> we're just making up words over here. Micro. Every word is made up. That's true. We're so, just coming up with new words. Yes, we're like words. we're like Shakespeare or Doctor Seuss. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. Anyways, um, his theory on insular dwarfism as a result of limited resources found on an island that reduced the size of animals over generations, aka Thailand the rule, right. is also widely accepted. Cool. Um, I honestly just loved. Uh, learning about this guy like yes. he was totally new to me before i researched the episode same and to I was me like, too franz what? napka yeah salute you early early gay icon but even though you also killed your husband plane hijacker plane hijacker yeah first plane hijacker uh, what do you call kidnapped he was a 
victim of being kidnapped. I mean, that is pretty cool. I mean, he has a lot of titles. That is pretty cool. <laughs> I don't know if I'd want to be known as the first plane hijacker. No. <laughs> no. I read that and I was like, oh, shit. I guess somebody has to be the first. <laughs> uh, <laughs> like, okay. All right. Well, <laughs> after all that, let's rate Rabdodon, I guess. <laughs> And uh, we got to rate France. Yeah, I was going to say, and France. <laughs> all right, one, all right. One out of 65 million. Rabdodon gets 20 million from me. France gets like 55. Yeah, he's pretty badass. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, except for the fact that he killed his partner. Though, so, you know. Yeah, a little bit controversial. Yeah, I mean, but... it was like, oh, I don't want him to suffer. He just wanted to be dead. All right, well, that's it for this week. If you want to get a hold of the show, you can contact me at Matt D. Matt the Creator of Converge. And the question is, the co-host, you can find me on social media at Matt the Donald Creator on Facebook. And Methadone 64 on Twitter and Methadone 64 on Instagram. You can also find me at Paleobites um, at, at Paleobites Pod and, uh, on Twitter and Paleobites Podcast on Instagram and Paleobites Paleo Paleo Podcast at gmail.com for email. So I'm getting better at it, I think. You'll get there. One of these days. <laughs> I also have a book series on Amazon about dinosaurs. Megazel, available for print and Kindle. According to my notes I have here so far about the cataloging all the dinosaurs I used, there's no Rad the Dawn, but I only got the first two cataloged so far, so mm. there's a lot more to come. I used way too many creatures in this. I might have gone a bit overboard. Uh, you know what a Lythronax is? Absolutely not. Do you know what a Luso Titan is? You probably could read the entire list. Do you know what a Volcanodon is? You got Sebecus. me. Tyrannotitan, Cryolophosaurus, <laughs> Gorgosaurus. Yeah, I'll just stop you when we get to one that I know. Irritator. I oh, yeah, I've heard of that one before. Oh, yeah. Astrodon. No. Sylvisaurus. Argentinosaurus. Maybe. Yeah, I think I've told you about that one before. Uh, Alphadon. Mm mm. Triceratops. I mean, come on. Uh, Microraptor. That's hey. the one. With, that's the one with the goth chick. Yeah. <laughs> I'm like that one rings a bell. Yeah. Uh, Sukumimus. Yep. It, what you know, Sukumimus? Yeah, I've heard of that before. I'm so proud. <laughs> Thanks. All right. Well, that's it for this week. It's at the end of every episode of Paleo Bites. Uh, Cece, no Sukumimus. Rejoice. Wee. All right.